This is the world's biggest sodium ion and lithium hybrid battery. It doesn't power an electric car, it powers an entire city. The battery sector is changing very fast and hybrid batteries, I've talked about them on the channel a few times. I think I've done about 10 videos on them. Hybrid sodium and lithium batteries are very real. They're already in cars you can buy today in China. They're coming and I think that um, people aren't aware of the fact that these are actually an improvement in certain or well, certain conditions. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, and this is the world's first, first large-scale lithium-sodium hybrid energy storage, uh, basically, platform. It's um, operating with 98% green energy, and I'm not even talking about electric cars here, guys. I've done a number of videos on these batteries being used in plug-in hybrids or e-revs. So sodium lithium batteries, they are used now in hybrids. And this battery technology has some pretty big advantages over just lithium or just sodium batteries. However, I've got to say, I'm, I'm a little surprised to see that they're now be, being used in energy storage as well. So could we see the future of energy storage batteries, you know, big mega pack batteries, Tesla mega, mega pack batteries, BYD mega pack, could they utilize this new lithium and sodium combination? Well, it's already happening. China's first scale lithium sodium hybrid energy storage station began operation on Sunday last week in southwest China's Yunnan province. This station integrates the storage advantages of lithium and sodium batteries in the same battery pack, broadening application scenarios for sodium ion battery storage in China and accelerating the development of the new energy storage industry chain. Compared with current mainstream lithium ion batteries for storage, the newly launched lithium sodium hybrid energy storage station called Baoqi Energy Storage Station offers a longer cycle life. So you're going to get more life for the same amount of money, by the way, and operation in a wider temperature range from minus 20 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. That's the biggest advantage. Well, two advantages for the same price. You're getting a longer cycle life and you're getting a wider temperature range for usage. Batteries have been criticized a few times. They say lithium ion phosphate batteries aren't that great in cold temperatures. Now that used to be true, not so much anymore, but the truth is these sodium and lithium ion phosphate batteries, they've combined the two in the same pack, enable operations in colder temperatures and hotter temperatures. Additionally, abundant sodium resources uh, mean the cost of these batteries will be cheaper over the coming years. So in the future, I think we're gonna see most battery packs around the world being hybrid batteries. And one reason the cost will come down. They're either gonna be hybrid batteries or just sodium ion batteries because, well, price. Now, what's the disadvantage of a sodium ion battery? Energy density is not quite as high as lithium ion phosphate. It's about 20, 20 to 30% lower, depending on the battery. Some, some sodium batteries from some manufacturers are 50% lower. The newer ones from CATL are around 20% lower in energy density. But for energy storage, that doesn't really matter. The Baoqi Energy Storage Station spans an area of about 3.3 hectares, roughly equivalent to five football fields with install capacity of 400 megawatt hours. Based on two charge discharge cycles per day, the station can store and release 580 million kilowatt hours of electricity every year. That's equivalent to the yearly electricity demand of 270,000 households with 90% of the electricity coming from green energy for these batteries. So basically the batteries are being charged predominantly using excess solar generated during the day and a bit of wind power and only a minuscule amount of energy is coming from fossil fuel sources. The station uses China's first large capacity sodium ion battery with a response speed six times faster than current models. So essentially what this battery is doing, it's acting not only as base load, so base load in the, in the past, we thought that had to be coal or thought that had to be nuclear. Now batteries can act as base load power, but also the batteries can act as a peaker plant. So they can bring energy into the grid within a matter of a couple of seconds. 
they can act actually much quicker than a pico plant. So if there are times when the grid needs electricity, for whatever reason, this battery can inject electricity into the grid within a couple of seconds, which is incredibly fast. So the question is then why? Why even include lithium in these batteries? Why not just use sodium? It's energy storage. Do you even need lithium? Here's what uh, the company said. We are combining sodium batteries with more mature lithium to enhance the station's regulation capacity. So essentially what I think this means is that the belief is lithium ion phosphate batteries are as what should be used for energy storage. And just moving entirely to sodium is like a big paradigm leap for some companies. They can't kind of, oh, well, sodium, is that even... Uh, should we use that? Can we do that? Well, actually, hang on a minute. It's got lithium in there as well. And the companies go, oh, okay, great. It's got lithium in there as well. We'll be fine. Sounds crazy, but that's one of the reasons why these batteries are taking off because ultimately you don't really need lithium for solid, but for energy storage, which is just going to sit there, right? But there are some other small advantages as well. And those include having that higher energy density, which like I said, doesn't really matter for energy storage. But anyway, the station serves over 30 wind and solar power, power plants in Yunnan. The lithium-sodium hybrid technology enables more stable integration of large-scale renewables into the power grid and supports future participation in electricity market trading, said Wu Bin, Deputy Manager of the Baoqi Energy Storage Station Project. Yunnan is a representative region in China with a high share of renewables in its overall power supply, and that share is increasing pretty much every month. Currently, the installed renewable capacity in Yunnan exceeds 60 million kilowatts with a penetration rate in the power system hitting 70%. So most time, most days of the year, Yunnan is hitting 70% renewables. A very high share of renewables increases grid volatility though, necessitating greater energy storage support. And obviously having the battery removes that grid volatility. As of now, China's new energy storage technologies are rapidly advancing at an incredible pace that we've never seen before, faster than ever, with lithium-ion battery storage uh, being technically the most mature technology, but the most cost-effective in future will be sodium-ion batteries. But at this point, lithium batteries dominate the market with 97%. So yeah, there's other batteries out there, sodium-ion, uh, iron flow batteries, but they only have a very small percentage of the market at this point in time. That will change though. Growing demand for lithium batteries has raised concerns over resource shortages as 70% of lithium battery materials in China come from overseas. So China wants to reduce its dependency on lithium coming from outside of the country. One of the reasons why that pivot to sodium is happening. Sodium obviously is cheaper as well. In contrast, the raw materials for sodium batteries can be sourced from salt mines, seawater, and salt lakes. CCTV News reported that sodium resources in China's Ch Chaka Salt Lake alone are 500 times greater than global lithium reserves, citing an industry expert. In other words, China has all the, all the sodium it needs to make enough batteries for probably the next 100 years or more. Experts said that sodium resources, besides being abundant, have more favorable properties, such as stable operation across a wide temperature range. So what's the future of batteries? Well, I think for energy storage, the future is most likely to be predominantly sodium. Maybe there'll be some sodium hybrid batteries, but I think this is more of a fad. I don't think it'll last. Do I think it'll last for cars? Yes, I think sodium, lithium, hybrid batteries for cars are actually a really good idea. But for this purpose, for energy storage, I think just sodium batteries by themselves make more sense. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye-bye.